Hi, good evening. Welcome. After a leave of absence of uh, a few weeks, the church bells have just chimed six for us. So thanks for all who've been involved in getting that back together again. After they went a bit uh, haywire a few weeks back and started to sound the wrong uh, numbers at the wrong times. It being six o'clock on Wednesday the 17th of April, we are reading evening prayer Easter season from the Church of England. Common worship. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, Eremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device, or in the book, Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England, towards the beginning in the Prayer During the Seasons section, Evening Prayer, Easter Season. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, or by Zoom, same times, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page, live streaming on Facebook, audio on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel, video stays on Facebook for about a month, the audio YouTube forever. O Lord, make haste, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song, Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The full of Chartres hymn. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ the paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's lion burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head and brought with him from death's domains the long-imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory, now his sceptre ruleth all, earth, heaven, and hell before him bow, and at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore, into his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. Alleluia. Amen. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed psalms this evening, 67 and 72, you'll find at the back of the book, Psalms 67 and 72. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Give the King your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the Son of a King. Then shall he judge your people righteously, and your people with justice. May the mountains bring forth peace, and to the little hills righteousness for the people. May he defend the poor among the people, deliver the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. 
May he come down like rain upon the mown grass, like the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish, and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May his dominion extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes kneel before him, and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall do him service. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Long may he live unto him, may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, standing thick upon the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon, and its grain grow like the grass of the field. <clears throat> may his name remain for ever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all nations be blessed in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wonderful things. And blessed be his glorious name for ever. May all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. <clears throat> Scrolling past our first reading to a song of faith, turning back in our book to evening prayer during Easter season for the Canticle, a song of faith. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Our first Bible reading, Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy, I think, is the fifth book in the Hebrew Scriptures. Turn to the beginning after Genesis. Four books further on, you'll find Deuteronomy, the last one in the Torah. Pentateuch, <clears throat> Deuteronomy, book of Deuteronomy. And within Deuteronomy, we're looking for chapter number six. Chapter six, large number in the margin. Chapter number six in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes, the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and, preserve, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home, when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob to give you, a land with fine large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God shall fear him. Sorry, the Lord your God, you shall fear him. <clears throat> the Lord your God, you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. Do not follow other gods, any of the gods of the peoples who are all around you, because the Lord your God who is present with you is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. You must diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees and his statutes that he has commanded you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may go in and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you thrusting out all your enemies from before you, as the Lord has promised. 
When your children ask you in time to come what is the meaning of the decrees and statutes, the ordinances that the Lord your God has commanded you, then you shall say to your children, we, are Pharaoh's, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord displayed before our eyes great and awesome signs and wonders against Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his household, and brought us out from there in order to bring us in to give us the land that he promised on oath to our ancestors. Then the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our lasting good, so as to keep us alive, as is now the case. If we diligently observe this entire commandment before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, we will be in the right. <clears throat> So with the exception of that middle paragraph, which looks the way I've got Deuteronomy 6 in front of me, this is a chiasma. So we've got uh, five paragraphs, the opening and closing probably mirrored better in terms of their syllables and their rhythm, their meter rhyme in the Hebrew than they are in English. Um, they don't quite have the same meaning, which is sometimes the case. Then we've got um, two shorter paragraphs uh, for after the first paragraph, just before the final. And then we've got a middle section which has a different um, subject entirely. So the opening and closing two paragraphs are about commandments, observance of the commandments, um, statutes, laws, charges, ordinances. And then the middle, um, God will give you land and property that you did not buy and prepare and build. And uh, you will follow just God and not the gods of the people around, but the God that the writers are proposing to God's people to follow and to worship. Otherwise, God will become angry. The um, second paragraph includes the Shema, the um, declaration here, O Israel, Lord your God is one God. You shall love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, might, strength. So that's um, used in Book of Common Prayer worship, or certainly my tradition is to use that in the common prayer worship uh, as a quote from Jesus, two commandments, um, love the Lord your God and love your neighbours yourself, as a summary of the law. And we had uh, the Ten Commandments, if not this morning, yesterday morning, recently at any rate, the Ten Commandments, uh, which I tend to rehearse at, uh, in my prayer book services during Lent and Advent, or Advent and Lent, perhaps I should say. And... Uh, our reading this evening, whether written on uh, escape from slavery or on return from exile, uh, maybe it was a tradition that was passed down until coming out of exile when it was um, codified and written down, whether it was an invention then, um, but uh, set in the mouth of Moses, written as if it were a history of God's people. Um, very useful tool if we're trying to lead and run a people to have either an oral or an actual or invented tradition that we can uh, refer back to. We can say, well, our ancestors didn't obey God, and look what happened to them. We've got to obey God, and then we'll get it right. Um, similar tactic used by Paul in some of his letters to the church. Um, these people did what they did, and they were sent as an example for us to learn from. And uh, if our society is a religious one, then we can say, well, God has told us to live like this, uh, whether they are our rules as the leadership or not. And it makes it easier to manage and control and direct and uh, grow a people, to judge them, to uh, maintain order. If we have sort of an external construct of laws and suggestions and decrees. And uh, so the writer here is saying, these rules are given to you. If you live by them, then you will live long and well. And uh, I would suggest, in my experience as uh, a Christian, that... Uh, the Christian way of life, from its example of God's revelation in scripture, tradition and reason, makes for a better world, better society, better relations, better understanding of self um, than many other codes and creeds, and certainly uh, better than making up our own rules as we go along. And it's much easier to work with a group of people who adopt and are prepared to submit to the same rules, regulation, direction, um, as we live together, as we make progress in a world that otherwise has all sorts of other gods and ambitions, aims and goals and objectives, quite apart from truth, authenticity, uh, accountability, um, responsibility. Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, our next reading, scroll on to that. Ephesians is about halfway through the second covenant, which is the last fifth of your Holy Bible as a rule. Christian scriptures, 
After the Gospel Acts, Romans, and the first, second, third Corinthians, there's a set of books, AEIOU, Galatians, Ephesians, written to smaller congregations, before we get to the set written by and to named individuals, and then Revelation to conclude. Book of Ephesians. Within Ephesians chapter 2, large number 2 in the margin, chapter 2, book of Ephesians, and we're reading the first 10 verses. They're the small numbers in the text of the verse numbers. Verses 1 to 10, chapter 2, book of Ephesians. Scroll onto it if you are following electronically. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the rule of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Interestingly, in this uh, letter, we've got Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. Or I should say Christ Jesus, actually, isn't it? Um, where it's written there two or three times. Was it in Galatians we had the other day, Colossians, um, where Paul just used the word Christ or anointing? <clears throat> we've got Christ Jesus here. Um, Christ is means the anointed one, it's Messiah, um, Greek word, the chosen one, um, Jesus, uh, the name of uh, the man. And the opening half of the paragraph talks about how those rules and regulations that were to the fore in our first reading help us uh, live more sensibly than if we just follow our own devi- the devices and the desires of our own hearts, uh, as I suggested earlier. So here Paul is suggesting to this newfound community, Jewish and Gentile background, that you live by God's instruction and direction. Um, doesn't major so much on the Ten Commandments or indeed on the Shema the, or the summary of the law, but uh, just says um, we now should live um, by the spirit that lives amongst, lives in and around us um, and uh, submit to God who is rich in mercy. And we should follow the spirit and uh, the revelation of God through scripture, tradition and reason, as the Anglicans would have it, um, rather than following our flesh, following the spirit. And uh, as we do that, um, we will know God's grace. And because of God's grace, we will be enabled to do that. So the second half of the paragraph talks about us having capacity to be able to serve God in this way, particularly Jewish background people who um, don't come from the Jewish faith and heritage that uh, the Jews do. The Jews would have lived by the law to the best of their ability up until this point, one would imagine. Um, And so they have security of that, but a Gentile background person wouldn't. But uh, they are brought into this new um, order because of God's grace. And uh, Paul's view was that Jews circumcised or not likewise actually have to rely on God's grace to draw them in because the law rather than setting them free, actually um, demonstrates their need for grace. So as he writes here, you've been saved through faith, not your own doing, it's grace, so that no one may boast. And uh, Paul is very keen not to boast. He gets himself tangled when he tries to promote himself as a worthy leader and apostle, because uh, he's so concerned about his humility and not wishing to boast. May we learn from him, follow God's ways and uh, not our own, that uh, God may be able to work to and through us, and draw others to that place where they may be forgiven and therefore have fulfilled lives as they live by the Spirit. To the responsory back in evening prayer during Easter, the Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, he has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, the Lord is my strength and my song, he has become my salvation. <coughs> The song of Mary, the stone which the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, 
to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. <clears throat> Source, Son, Essence, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day and we look back at those things that have made us feel glad to be alive and inspired us, whether they're skills and talents you've given us that we are pleased with and or that others have been grateful for, whether we've had good news, enjoyed good weather, enjoyed creativity, our own or that of others, we might have rested, we might have made progress, jobs and chores, claims, we thank you for all those things that have inspired and brought us on, been positive for us in this day. But if things have fallen badly, we've had bad news, people have been unkind to us, even our own voices have brought us down, we might have had challenges of relentless, monotonous work and care at home, hard graft. We might have lost money, had an appointment postponed, on which we were relying and hoping. We might have experienced increased frailty in ourselves or in others. Lost contact with a loved one, a child, or a parent. Maybe even been bereaved. Suffered from bombing and oppression and violence. Climate breakdown, flooding, winds, whatever it might be. If that's been our experience, we come to you praying for your healing, your provision, your protection, your hope to see us through the night and face tomorrow. With Release International, we pray for all parties in Uttar Pradesh and other northern states, such as Anish and Mohan, who have been arrested or imprisoned. Ask God to grant these pastors strength and courage, and pray that those persecuting them would repent and turn to Christ, or at least see the error of their ways and recognise that there isn't actually anything illegal being done by these people. I would assume. Christian Aid invites us to pray for activists working across generations to change the world for the better. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land, serialised through, through the week. God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for young people heading into combat, bearing the burden of what others have done and what they would be asked to do. For civilians in Israel, Gaza and the West Bank, that they would be protected, that every life would count, be cherished and remembered. Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine, again serialised. We mourn every casualty of conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. Suffolk Diocese Prayers, we pray for our um, bishops, Martin and Mike. Martin as he retires, Mike as he steps up. Pray for the vacancy and see that they, as they look for a new diocesan for this county. We pray that they will, that new person will be for stipendiary clergy parish system church buildings. Pray for our Archdeacon Rich joining us on Saturday for our St George's Day Parade, preaching with us and for us. And uh, for Josh, our Rural Dean, for the service he's given us over this last year and uh, his future um, as he steps down from that post and um, considers his place as a minister from the Church of England with uh, the Church's current position um, on the gender, troubling to him and to others for various different reasons either too slow or too fast. And uh, with the diocese cycle, we pray for um, Karen and Leslie, Katrina and Lauren, who are lead clergy in the Blackbourne team ministry. <coughs> uh, we pray for them and those that serve with them, uh, especially their lay people, treasurer, warden, secretaries, as uh, they seek to grown and uh, promote the use of their church building and what they stand for in the communities where they find themselves. We pray too for chaplains and mental health care across the county, um, thanking you for their contribution to community life as they support um, both the uh, patients and uh, people who receive health and support from mental health care, uh, but also look after the staff and as that sort of critical friend uh, and able both to potentially look to better care and provision than they would otherwise receive. Pray for Obadiah, who is tutor at KCTC, which is uh, some sort of presumed educational organisation in Kagera Diocese. Um, 
and the way this is written suggests they are also uh, a parish priest for um, Bumba. We pray for the staff and patients at Mugwanza Hospital in that diocese. We pray that they'll be able to um, increase their offer of health care um, through the support of this diocese and elsewhere, that they might invest in um, kit and people and training. Pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses in Holton of Beckles Road, Southwold Road, the Street Holton Road, Blyford Road, Blyford Lane, sorry, Bungie Road, Blyford Lane, Sparrowhook Road, Wenniston, Blackheath Road, Blythe, Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow, Close, Church Lane, Coldview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Coleskroft, Blyford Lane, Hammonds Walk, in uh, Bramfield, Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, Hill, Pitmans Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Hurstle Road, Walpole Road, Thorrington Road, Wenniston Road, Southwold Road, Blyford Lane, Kings Lane and Blyford, and in Thorrington, Priory Lane, The Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfields, The Wash, Brussels, Green, Wesselton Road, Willow March Lane and Devil's Lane. Pray for the businesses based in or serving those addresses so that will thrive and prosper. People living there whose life is difficult at the moment, they will turn to you with pleading and uh, will be persistent in looking for the help they need and humble to receive it when offered. Pray for those that care for them and would be concerned for them that they might be able to achieve provision that they might otherwise be able to call for themselves. And we pray for those uh, in those addresses whose life is going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving to the neighbours and communities with offers of help and support, time and money. And uh, we thank you for the blessing they are experiencing at this time. And if you think of those for whom life is a struggle, we remember specifically Andrew, Tracy, John, Ginny, Henry, Veronica, Helen, Princess of Wales, Kate, Joan, Rachel, His Majesty Charles III, Eileen, Jonathan, Francis, Felicity, Janet, Maya, Valerie, Liz, Leslie, Malcolm, Lee, Cynthia, Moira, Jean and Peter. And we pray that we'd be helpful to them, they would know your presence, that your act in sovereign grace bring about salvation, healing, deliverance. And uh, where the challenge here is going to only worsen, we pray that that journey will be as uh, supported, as openly and honestly reported and uh, understood and planned as can be. And we thank you for all its good lives of Phyllis, David, Joyce, Wendy, Joan, Shirley, Sally, Tony and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident and those that have taken their own lives. We pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who have heard you faithfully here and all whose years mine for at this time. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of life, chance or the loss of loved one. And that we pray that we will hear your inspired words spoken through the breath of your spirit. In, by your incarnate mouth, and that will calm the storms of our grief and transport us in the end to the eternal pre safety of your greater presence. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. <laughs> Rahasamilisha <laughs> And <laughs> The Easter season collect from the book God of Life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.